All right. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Four Podcast. Uh, Queen Mary Slider Takeover Month. I hope you guys have been enjoying the episodes thus far, and we have two more amazing guests on the show today. Part of the Queen Mary Slider team. We got Cavities and we got Lone Star. How you guys doing today? What's up? doing good, uh, man? I I have to say uh, I did, I've done two two of these already, and I just. I, hearing more stories and, and learning more about the event because I've only been one one time, and I have to say I absolutely love the event for for starters. You guys do a fucking fantastic job, um, bringing that event to life and and bringing your characters to life. I think that's fucking amazing, dude. You guys do awesome, and it's unlike any other event I've actually ever been to, really, because you guys got more freedom to do more awesome shit than I get to see at other haunts. So that's really fun. Um, so I, I have to just dive right into this one right here, and this is going to be a, actually a, a, a fan question as well. And, and oh, that question. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got some. I got some fan questions that you are definitely going to interest everyone. But I, the first fan question actually comes from Bronx, and he tells he asks, uh, "What age did you guys start getting into doing? Huh? I know everybody knows Bronx, and I know Bronx too. It's the homie right there. Um, what age did you guys start getting into scare acting?" Uh, for me, it was 25. Okay. I was 25 years old. Now nice. 27. Are we, so. are, are we talking like when we actually started doing it or when we like fell in love with it and like wanted to get into it? We'll do age and then tell tell me a little history about what made you want to go into like your event and do what sliding and scaring and all that. So I was 19 when I started and then... When I first fell in love with it, it was when I first started going to Scary Farm when I was like 11 or 12 or something like that. And then okay. seeing the sliders back in the day and stuff. I don't know about Justin when he first like saw it and liked it. Um, I first saw it when I was a bit younger. I was like in middle school. I was going with my dad all the time to um, not Scary Farm. And then I saw like the sliders and everything, and I started falling in love with it. But I didn't actually start pursuing it till I was actually in my twenties, just because all my friends <laughs> back in high school never were interested in this type of things. And then right. going into uh, big boy life, I next thing you know, I was working over at Disney, and my leads over there were scare actors over at Knotts. I'm like, dude, how do you do that stuff? And you're like, oh, hey, just go over here to Chapman Park. And then next thing you know, I started getting tied in with the sliders. Good old yeah. I, rem- I remember that night, Justin, when we first met you. Mm-hmm. Good old Chapman. Man. I hear tons of great stories that come out of that damn park, and I have to make my way down there when stuff gets better because you guys do some, like I said, you guys do some crazy shit that even – my tall ass, I'd be like, shit, man, I don't even know if I, you know, I'm about to get a cramp or something, man, like, pull a muscle, break another ankle or something. <laughs> uh, hey, man, if, if my if my fat ass can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, for starters, uh, when I first walked into this event, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. This was the uh, 2019 first year I ever went, 10th anniversary, Um and I think what started the night for me uh, was walking to the mazes with my buddies. And uh, we went on the media night, so that was, like, super fun uh, just to see everyone there and everyone just kind of geared up and ready for the for the, for the the season, man. That's always fun to go opening night to see everyone at, like, 110%, um, just ready to go. And the first thing I saw when I walked in, and now that I'm looking back and I saw Cavity's character, I think it was probably you, and I think I have it on tape. Uh, someone, like I said, it looked like your character, uh, had a lollipop in their mouth, brought it out of their mouth and the other person put it in their mouth. And I was like, uh, I'm in. Yeah, that's something I do. (laughs) I was like, I'm in for a a freaking sick ass night. Then if they're going to be doing stuff like this, like I don't see this anywhere else. So. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, all right, here we go. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited to experience this event now. Uh, but I, I, I've seen it all. And, and when I went to dark Harbor, like I thought I've seen it all. And then I, and I saw some new stuff that I'd never seen. I've heard train horns out in this, in the scare zones, which literally made me drop to the floor at one point. Um, one thing I did like though, and I, and I keep bringing it up every show because 
I, I, you know, it, it was something I first saw at Knott's, but it continues at Dark Harbor, which I like, is the, uh, the Slider Show. That is something that I always thought was so fucking good. And, uh, you know, a lot of talent come in and out of these shows. Um, tell me something a little bit about that. Like, how does that, what is that, do you guys have to practice uh, a whole routine? Do you guys get together and you guys plan out your routine of what's going to happen, what's going to go down through this show? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, we, for us, well, like, yeah, for most of us, it's pretty much like an all-year-round thing. Like, as soon as season's over, like, we'll all get together, like, a week after and be like, all right, like, it's been a week since we haven't slid, so, like, we have to slide. So, like, we'll go, we'll all meet up, we'll slide for a whole day, and then we'll be like, damn, this sucks, because just from a week off, it, like, kills our bodies. And so, like, we'll, um we'll get together and then after that from then it's just like almost like every week <laughs> and then uh but when it comes closer to the show time yeah like uh we'll start practicing and doing all the choreography and stuff like before auditions even come around like we'll start seeing like a couple okay, months we'll, before yeah like we'll be like okay like this person they can you know you know they can it feels like they can be part of the show like we'll start s scouting and stuff and like once auditions come around, like, we pretty much have, like, what would you say, Justin, like, half the show maybe done, like, by the time auditions come around? Uh, at least a good three quarters of it would already be done by then. Yeah, and then after that, it's just finishing it, and then from then on, like, the last, like, maybe two months, month and a half is just correcting it and, like, pulling it off, like, flawless. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of the stunts and, and everything that you guys do in here... Like I said, <laughs> something that I see and I'm like, I yeah, I don't know about me doing that, but you know, I like watching you guys do that. It's awesome. Um but I mean, it's just it's it's really really well put together and for you guys to go out there and put a fucking amazing ass show out, out there for everyone to see. I mean, one of my favorite things I, I keep bringing up too is I, I when I went to the media night, I got to go up to the VIP lounge with my uh my my world famous Jack and Coke. And uh, just got to watch you guys. That was probably one of the highlights of my night, just watching everyone do their thing. Uh, and I have a lot of fun out there just doing that. I do that at knots all the time is just sit around and just literally watch everyone scare. I think it's just cool to see everyone's style and techniques. What are some of your favorite ways to uh, accomplish a good scare? What are some of your favorite ways to, to get really good scares out there? For me, I tend to try more so gross people out so that's why i do the lollipop <laughs> like as you saw because some people like it grosses them out like i'll stick it out i'll just go like, i'll put it towards their face and sometimes they want to take a lick or like oh like you just lick that and then next thing you know one of the other sliders comes by go oh candy and, and they walk away and then yeah, I, I, some... re I remember that justin we had like a, one night i remember we had one community blow pop and i think it went from you to just well, all the to... candy starts off with me. <laughs> Paul, then it went to me. Then I passed it on to somebody else. And then Nick had it at the end. And then I think you took it back after like four of us like had it in our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody else took it from me. It was no, that's mine. And it went to creep. And then oh, from there, it went to freak cherry. And who knows where it went. Next thing I know, I get it. It's like a little bitty marble. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's no, my yeah. tactic. It's more so grossing people out. I'll yeah, pull mine, everywhere. Yeah, mine, I don't, I guess I don't really know. I'm like, I'm a big dude. So I already want to hit the ground. Like it's already like, it's like an earthquake hit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, like me, me and Paul do this a lot where, it's called a kamikaze side where we kind of jump into the air like as high as we can and then slam hard. But when it comes to like that, we mainly do that as a trick during the show. But when it comes out to the streets, it's just like we'll do it like half notch where we'll still get a pretty good like height hit and like slide. But like I guess my style of sliding around is I like to joke around a lot. Like I'll crack jokes with people or just mess around like laughing wise with people you know i'm not like justin where he likes to gross them out i'll just get a scare have a laugh with them and then like just dip out pretty much yeah i think that was like one of the things i actually put in a compilation 
uh, of of Justin doing the lollipop. I had never seen anything like that for starters. I was like, okay, <laughs> like I said, when I walked in, I was like, it's gonna be a good night. Um, and uh, it's one of those things. Like I said, I just like walking around and just seeing everyone's how everyone does things. I mean, you you hear so many different styles and techniques that everyone does something different. And I think that's why I like the more uh, freedom and interactivity at Queen Mary that you guys have towards the guests. Because um, mm-hmm. I remember like a lot of the, a lot of the, the the street performers coming up and just legit just talking with me, having full on conversation. I actually stapled money onto a person, and people thought I was the weirdo. But I was like, dude, he can take the pain. So you know, I did it. You know, just give me the money, I'll do it. Um, I mean, just the interactions with some of the characters that were just so fun. Uh, and I have a good time just talking with everyone. I, I'm like a kid in a candy shop when when it comes to interac- interaction, dude. I just love interacting with people. Like it's just it makes for good storylines. It makes for just fun moments to capture on camera or just to have in your head forever. Um, and I really enjoy that. Obviously, of course, you know this this the boat itself means a lot to me. Um, I, like I keep saying. Uh, my grandfather, who my great grandfather, who was in World War II, actually came back on that boat. So every time I go to that boat, I always just have like a little. It's like a, it's got a little personal connection to me, so that's why I think I love going to this. But of course, with the history of the boat, of it being haunted, I need to know. You guys seen anything weird in that boat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What is some of the scariest things you you've seen on that thing? Just like name one off the top of your head. Um. Well, well, I have like two right. encounters that like scared the fuck out of me. Go for um, it. The first one, uh, this girl I was dating at the time, uh, her mom used to work for the ship. She was like the event coordinator for there. So she knew like all the rooms and everything. And she's like, oh, let's go take a little tour. <laughs> so we did. And we're in the back of the boat. Uh, I believe it was the infirmary. Uh, Omar, you could probably could clarify that. The the spot all the way in the bag down below. Yeah, I've I've we've been in there, so yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So if you've ever been down there, there's no doors. All the doors are off the hinges. There's no doors. She takes me down there. We're walking around. We're looking at everything. It's a little creepy like feel to it. You got that little chill going down your back. As we're walking back, you all of a sudden you just start hearing all the doors slam shut and there's no doors. Oh shit. You just hear, Thum, thum, thum. we look at each other and we go fuck and we just bolted up the <laughs> stairs and like up on top of the deck we're just like what the fuck just happened it's like there's no doors down there it's like uh-uh no no we're not going back down there <laughs> <laughs> oh god That's- yeah mine was when i did media night for my first year i remember they were like hey you want to do media night and i was like hell yeah and then me and nick aka Killis, uh we had a room together and he was already scared. Like, he was like, oh, we have to sleep with the TV on and the lights on. I'm like, dude, like, I can't sleep like that. I have to sleep in the pitch black. So he's like, fine, whatever. So, like, we turn off all the lights and stuff. And our room was shaped weird. Like, it was two beds. And then, for some reason, it just had this long, just random extension to the room. And then all the way at the back of that extension was the closet and the bathroom. And I remember um, we, we got up early. We were getting ready for media and we were like, okay. Um, I was like, okay. So he got out of the, sh- he got out of the bathroom. He closed the door. Um, we put our s- personal stuff in the closet. We closed it that we turn off all lights and we go and we come back. The freaking bathroom door is open. The sink's running and our, and the closet's open, but we were like, damn, did we get robbed or something? Like, did we forget to close the door? Right. And, like, we go to, to see our personal stuff. Everything's there. Like, nobody touched it. The door was just open. And we're like, yo, that's weird. And then we were like, oh, maybe, like, the the people came in and freaking do the beds. And they probably just left the water running. And, like, when we checked out, we're like, hey, like, have they gone in to, like, clean up our room and stuff? And they're like, oh, no, they don't do that till after checkout, like, and stuff. We're like, well, okay. So we were just <laughs> like, damn, that's our first ghost. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's something I think with that ship. Uh, a lot of the stories I've heard is that is one thing I hear a lot with the whole the door and the the running water and the sink. Um, that's something that I do hear a lot on that boat. And hopefully one day I get to go ghost hunting on there and see what I catch. Um, yeah. Because about the only interaction I've had with ghosts is at a <laughs> old high school that I work or that I've 
been to a couple times in my school district that I work at in Norwalk, uh, Excelsior High School. And it's uh, I've seen some shit in that in that building, and it's and I've heard stories, and it's all it all matches up. So, yeah, man, I'm I'm really interested in all that. So when I when I get to talk to people that, that worked at Queen Mary, it's just I want to hear the stories, man. But um, obviously, you guys um, you have your own characters. Uh, how did it come about? Uh creating your characters and, and what's the, the story behind your characters Justin go first oh bitch um, <laughs> well, I don't know do you want me to go first I don't know alright um, so when I first came to like creating the characters I was having a lot of issues with my character at first uh, I was originally named Cables because my car battery died and <laughs> jump in my car <laughs> I didn't have jumper cables, and so the next day when they named us, they gave me the name fucking Cables. So I was supposed to be a trolley car hobo, and I just didn't know what the hell to do with it. I was already thinking about getting like the like the jumper cables, turning them into like spark rods, and using that as my sliding gear. I couldn't really like think of anything else for like how he would act, how he would talk, and when it came up to auditions. I was just like, you know, I used to be a pastry chef, so why not fucking go with something like that? And I was trying to, we had to do a pop stop, and I slammed down, I popped up in front of David Wally, and I'm just looking sh- him straight in the eye, I go, you like marshmallows? And then he just starts <laughs> laughing, and I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm just going to go with fucking candies and pastries, and next thing you know, I was cavities, like freaking sweet clank. Myth, the legend was born. <laughs> <laughs> and then now it's a uh, tooth fairy. <laughs> yeah, the tooth fairy. <laughs> uh, well, I got like mine, like when. Well, my my first name wasn't even Lone Star; it was Torrid. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> the reason why they gave me that name was because of Sparrow, because at that time it was the coaches and stuff like they had gathered up and like they were trying to figure out names for us. And Sparrow shot that idea and like he was like, it has to be that. And so when we got up and we got up our names and stuff, they were like, you're Torrid. And at first I was like, I don't know what that is, but sure, whatever. <laughs> and then like after they were like, do you know why we picked that? And I was like, no. I was like, I don't even know what that is. And they're like, oh, it's, uh, it's a fat chick uh, hot topic store. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I looked it up on my phone when we were there. And I was like, oh, I fucking hate you guys. It was like a long duration. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, fuck it, whatever. I'm not gonna get mad about. It. I'm not one to be like, you can name me whatever the fuck you want, and like, I won't care. And so I was like, damn. And then like all all this time, I'm like, fuck you, Sparrow. Like, <laughs> character wise, it was just at first I didn't really know what to be, and then I was like, well, I'm a big country fan, and I grew up over here in this area in the Sequoia Mountains and stuff like most of my life. And then I was a, a rodeo clown as a kid at the local Lions Rodeo over here. And so I was like, I only did it for like a year. <laughs> and then I just found me thought, I'm like, well, I'll just be like a cowboy like clown or something. And then I was like, oh, I could just be a rodeo clown because it's already in the name and everything. So I was like, I'll just be a rodeo clown. <laughs> and then that was pretty much it and then after that and then this last year it was the second night before season ended and sparrow had we all meet up at the parking lot like before and he was like hey like so we know i know i gave you this name a long time ago and i feel bad now (laughs) (laughs) and he was like but we're gonna change it and i was like what like the season's about to be over and like he talks to to looney and then he was like that looney comes up to me all right, you ready for your new hot name? And I was like, sure. And then he was, she was like, all right, Lone Star. And I was like, yo, that sounds pretty sick. And I was like, all right, cool. And then that's it. I was just Lone Star now. And it, it also, Sparrow was like, it fits more with your character. You know, it sounds more like a cowboy kind of name. So I was like, all right, cool. And in my head, and then he also told me, I was like, I, I just think of Lone Star from fucking uh, Captain Lone Star from Spaceballs. But yep. <laughs> But, you know, uh, I was thinking the same exact thing. I didn't want to say anything coming into this podcast, but that was no, the first thing I, that came I, to mind. I, 
I'm fine with it. I freak, I, I fucking love Spaceballs. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, I can say, like, oh, yeah, it's because of Spaceballs. Or I could be like, oh, yeah, because it's like a cowboy name. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I'm not the only uh, sci-fi geek in here then. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on the topic of Chris Kri- Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the beat. Big bite shit. <laughs> Man, now I gotta go. Now I'm gonna have to watch that movie. That's it's been a while. <laughs> um, on the topic of you know creating your character and everything, I actually have a another fan question from uh, Gabby, my art, uh, Gabby Art, my dude, and she asked uh, anything, any advice you can give her for creating a haunt slash slider character. Um, I would say like. See where if you already know, like you're gonna be on streets or in a maze, or yeah, it's mainly for streets because I don't know if they depends on your hunt, but see if you're gonna be on streets or maze first and then see what the area is like. So say like you're you know in like a zombie area, you're obviously gonna be a zombie. Or if you're in a clown area, you gotta be a clown. And then I would say from there, obviously you gotta all the parameters and stuff but then just kind of add your own personal touch to it so like with justin the candy thing and stuff and like you know he's evolved that to like the tooth fairy on certain nights and stuff and it makes sense because teeth cavities it makes sense yes and so i mean just i would say just add your own personal touch to it like with me like this year when like before i even got my name i just started adding like a memoriam towards the original rodeo clown from ghost town lone uh monstar and i would do a couple nights i would just do a star over my eye like he would and then so that was like my homage to like the the first rodeo clown and then that's just like my personal touch to him and like you know like i don't know just add your own personal touch to depending on whatever area or parameters you're given and stuff. I don't know what Justin has to say about that. Yeah, that's what Omar says. It's really definitely a good point. You, when it comes to like creating your character, um, one of the guys that works a hunt with us, because we were talking about like, hey, what if we're not clowns next year? Like, what's what do we do? Do we change? He's like, no, your character is your character. What can you take from your character and put it towards the new look if it changes? Like what yeah. I said, my character's candy and teeth. That's my colors may change. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be red and green. I don't need to be a certain look. No matter if it's just candy and teeth crossover, that's still my character. That's what my character base is, is candy and teeth. Right. When it comes to actually creating a character, find out some things that you like. What's some things that you know you can play with that you don't necessarily need a prop per se just something Mm -hmm. that you know you can use because props they're easily to lose and then you got to think of it if you're carrying a prop you have to carry that prop the whole entire day that whole Mm -hmm. night it's not like um i'm pretty sure you saw me bring it out i had a airzuka my airzuka is i have a bunch of wrist rocket rubber bands in there so when i shoot it it smacks you in the face (laughs) really hard um that's something that I can easily just put back away in my haunt box and leave it alone. I don't necessarily need to keep it with me the whole time because that's not my character. That's just a tool I can use. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, what's uh, interesting is like uh, ever since, you know, we started the, the podcast with the whole, the whole team. The one thing I liked is everyone has a different uh, answer for this question. And uh, I think that's awesome because each one of you have your own, uh, you know, kind of ways of doing things in your own, um, opinions of, of how things should, you know, how people can create character, which is awesome for the person who asked this question because, you know, there's so much advice going out there to, you know, so much ways of them creating their character now. So uh, you guys, again, delivering two great answers. Um, I got a specific question for Lone Star here. It was uh, oh, sent okay. to me anonymously. Um, and I was told to ask about uh, someone sneezing on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, so you mind sharing that story a little bit? 
I didn't even think about someone would like ask. I knew someone would ask it, but in like today, I was like, it didn't run through my head at all. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, my first year there, I think it was like, yeah, it was it was a Sunday of the first weekend, and I'm like super hyped because I'm like, wow, like I've made it. I'm working a haunt, you know. Yeah, I've gotten like hit and stuff, but like it's nothing crazy, you know. Um, like you know, people will hit you and like in a reaction, and it's not like a full on like someone's gonna grab you by the shirt and like face punch you and stuff. But right. like, you know, so I was like, okay, it's whatever, you know. And then this one night, that night, um, my spot that I always like to hang out was out outside the front gate by the, because of the floor there and like the little crevices you can hide in, and. I'm running up for a slide. I see this person, like this group, and then there's another group behind them. And I see the people behind them. And I could tell that the chick is like freaked out of her mind. And I'm like, cool. And so I start like sneaking my way and I snake around and I just drop and I slap down. And as soon as I get up, as I'm like screaming, yeehaw, because that's <laughs> what I do. I, I, as soon as I'm like face to face with her, just full on knees oh. on my face and i was like in my head i just kind of was i just like i hit the scare scare her whatever and then i kind of like moved to the side and i was like what the <laughs> <laughs> and then the chick was just like oh my god oh my god you scared me so much and i was like i could see that <laughs> and then but i kind of just played it off and i kept just you know like messing with her and then like i just let her go and then after that, I go to the back and like, uh, like just uh, like, you know, see if my freaking makeup's ruined because I just got sneezed on, or I got like a booger hanging on my cheek or something. <laughs> and like, I think it was Looney or someone. It might have been Paul. And I'm like, I just got, I just got fucking sneezed on. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I just got sneezed on. They're like, oh, like that's fucking, that's nasty. And like, that's crazy. I'm like, I don't care, whatever fucking two weeks later it's a completely different like you know it was a good night it was towards the beginning i think it was like right after main gate and we stormed the gate and stuff and after we cleared the big old crowd like we we hit our first slides out to the crowd and my like second or third slide a dude sneezes on me and like this time i could <laughs> smack, like i could feel whatever comes out of his nose just like slap on my oh, face and i was dude. And I was like, I kind of, it happened so fast that I kind of like walked away. And then I like went into the corner and I told Paul, I was like, dude, I got sneezed on again. And I was like, damn it. And I was like, but yeah, yeah. I, I got mean, sneezed on. I didn't think anybody would remember that. Can, can you just like, okay, it's one thing to get sneezed on pre COVID, but now with COVID, like, God, I would just be. <laughs> I'd be so grossed out at that point, man. I'd be like losing my shit, man. But wow, that that's like that's just ironic that it happens once and then two weeks later, a whole different person, and it happens again. It, it's just wow. yeah. What is the what is the that chances a, of that happening to anyone? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that was a running joke for like that for my first season was like, hey, you know, who knows? Now you might get sneezed on again, third third time's a charm, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, man. Which that's a good actually uh, transition into this question from another uh, another fan who you guys actually may know. Uh, it, it comes from uh, Queen Mary Dark Harbor underscore Nameless, and he oh, asks, yeah. uh, "Every ever had to break character during haunt? If so, why?" Yeah. When and why? Um, uh, me and this happened this last year. Um, uh, me and Mooch, uh, because we were allowed to roam, uh, the line, the queues of the mazes, right? And so, but we'd always like to hit the one uh, B three forty, because it was inside the ship, you know. And a lot of people enjoyed it. Like we would, it, we mainly did it so you know people could take pictures and stuff and like hang out. Not really like go crazy and hit slides in there because you know it's kind of like hard to do it, but just kind of like startle someone you know just to get them hyped up for the maze and we would go literally through the line from like the back of the line just work our way through all the crowd 
literally like the group right before that was about to go in B340. Uh, the guy didn't move and Paul was in front of me. And so we, when they don't move, we don't try to like, we don't shove, we don't do none of that. Like, like we kind of just like, if they have like their arm on the rail, we'll like duck under it or something, or like we'll squeeze on by. Right. And so that's what Paul did. He like squeezed on by, like barely like skimmed this dude's like shirt. And then he just shoves Paul into the gate. Oh shit. And I was like, Yo. And we're like, Hey, calm down. Like what the heck? Like, and the guy's like, well, you're bumping into me. And he's like cussing and doing all this stuff. And like, we see the, one of the supervisors there and like, we just go straight to her. Like, we don't even try to argue with the guy. We're just like, you know, whatever. And like, we, we tell them what happened and stuff and they got to do the whole call the code and everything. And then, uh, they, uh, they, they confront the person and ask them what happened. And then like, we get talked to, and then there was a whole situation of like, well, did you guys do anything wrong? We're like, no, like we literally, this is like our fifth, sixth time doing this tonight, like walking through the queues and like, nobody has ever had a problem with us like because we don't even like bump into people we just like shimmy on by right and that time we bro- we had to break out of characters that guy was like about to like <clears throat> beat the crap out of paul and like so i had to step in there too and be like me and paul were just like hey calm down what are you doing like you can't like hit us or stuff if you do that like you know you're gonna get kicked out yeah you know we're just working here we're doing our job you're paying money to come here and get scared like you know we didn't do anything to you you know that, that's just that just comes with uh going with the hunt like every now and then like you might you know encounter stuff like that but yeah that was the yeah that was the only time that i've ever broken out of character i've never had a bro- break out of character other than that i've had one time uh well two times it was the same reason but <laughs> two different times um uh, as you know dark harbor has bars fucking everywhere everywhere you turn there's a beer bar you turn oh vodka bar you turn hey, which brings bar. me to if you're gonna go to this event drink fucking responsibly <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we always hear the voice of god by like what 10 o'clock um but going back to the main portion of the story i see the paramedics i see this lady she's one of the freaking awesome paramedics we have like whenever it's showtime she'll be right there messing around with us right before show and then go back to doing her thing right I see her, she's pushing this lady in the wheelchair. And you could obviously tell the lady was hurt. And they're right there shining lights, like, move, move, move. And everyone's in the line for the bar. They don't want to lose their spot in line. No one's moving. And she just gets corralled. Everyone's just around her trying to get into the bar. So me, I just run in there and I just started yelling, move, get out, move, move. And I just started pushing, getting in the tunnel because lady's injured. Yeah. Got a tunnel, got her all the way to the nurse's aid. She's like, oh, thank you. It's like, yeah, no problem. And I went and started doing my thing. No one, of course, complained. They're just, hey, what the fuck? I was like, look down. And like, oh, and they started moving. And from there, the second time was the scare actor. She broke her ankle, twisted her ankle, something like that. Um, Omar knows the story. This chick like literally um, busted her ankle in circus same thing happened no one was fucking moving i went back in there move get the fuck out the way and they're like yeah what the fuck I'm like look down I'm like oh shit and they started moving did it all over again man yeah, yeah. i mean I, i've broken my ankle in a crowd so I, I know exactly how that feels um uh yeah man more of the story don't be a fucking dick in the crowd um because sometimes there may be an emergency or sometimes they're just doing their fucking job. Don't be a fucking dick. Uh, mm-hmm. Real simple. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, man, I think that's, again, the story that you brought up, though, of you guys interacting with the crowd, that was something that I noticed when I went. And I think that was something that I don't see at a lot of events. Um, Horror Nights is very on script, very kind of basic with how they scare and, and how they're supposed to be with their characters. Knots has a little bit more freedom, but they still have a storyline to keep with, and they still have to keep with the lore of the story, but they can still have some fun. With you guys, you guys have a basic storyline to keep with, but you guys have the freedom to play it out how you guys want to play it out, which I love. Um, And that's why I was so disappointed and, and depressed about it being canceled last year. Obviously, I know why it was canceled last year, but... 
it still was a depressing situation, I think, for the entire haunt community. Um, obviously, I, I've been seeing you guys been kind of keeping busy still and, and still sticking together with doing the, the food events, which I think is awesome. Um, and by the time this podcast came out, you guys have, would have already done the, the February 9th one, um, which I think is really cool. Uh, and I hope I made it out. I, I don't know the future yet, so my goal was to try to make it out. Uh, so I hope I made it out, but, uh, I think those are really cool that you guys go out and do those events. What was kind of the, the whole inspiration for you guys as a team to, to kind of group up and go to these events? Um, so Bree and Sparrow, well, Sparrow and Shutters, they live literally down the street from it and they went by the, the food truck ate and they recognized one of the people working it was an old, um, well, ex-haunt monster and, so they just got to talking. It's like, hey, what if we come over and do this, a little thing for us? And they're like, yeah, come on down. And then we didn't think it was going to be that popular because we went like the weeks before and it was just like, yeah, it was just like a normal food truck rally. But when they said the QM sliders were going to be there, oh, everyone in the hunt community just started popping up. We're like, oh, shit. We weren't expecting it to be that, that big. And then because um, now it brought more venue, well, it brought more customers to the truck, so more people were buying food, so they started inviting us out to other events, and then next thing you know, like, what about a Christmas event? I was like, fuck it, we'll be running around, sliding around like penguins and reindeer, <laughs> and then oh, they had the idea of making it the nightmare before Christmas. I, At that time, I had a really long beard, which I miss, oh, so I ended up being Santa, Oh. Um, freaking omar right there decided to be a fucking dog because he knows i'm fucking terrified of him <laughs> and everyone was a different christmas character and it just it was fun so it just kept going on to different things and we're we just been having fun with it it's fun for us because now it's a challenge because now we we have to expand and create a new character each time right. for those new events yeah yeah uh, i've only i've only done one of them, which was the Christmas one. Um, I went to the one before that. Um, I think it was, I think it was Halloween around there. It was like, it was at the beginning of October, but um, I had gone, but I think, um, uh, I think it was our first, your guys' first one that you guys did, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, they um, had a, a limit on the amount of people they wanted us sliding, and that was just yeah. for the food trucks just because they didn't know how big it was going to be and then they said yeah we could open two more yeah i i made the first one but i just went just to help out you know at, the, at our booth and stuff and like hang out with everybody because that was my first time seeing everybody since i had moved and you know it also gives me an excuse to you know drive six hours to go see all my friends and hang out and uh still scare and everything that's a trooper right there i mean that's mad respect uh, driving that long to come out here to, to hang out with family, man. That's that is what's up right there. Um, yeah, that drive sucked because <laughs> that same time, the first one that I went to, I didn't scare anything, but I was hanging out with everybody. I helped at the end to clean up. You know, we all still hung out after, and then like right after, it was like maybe midnight or one o'clock. From there, I went straight back all the way here home, and I think I had been up for like over like thirty hours. <sighs> And Justin had saw me the night before of the event. And even then I was still like super tired all day from the drive up and then the drive back. I, like, I barely made it here, like on fumes. Like I was like, like the last like exit of the freeway. I felt like I was falling asleep behind the wheel. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, and so like, look, I got off the freeway and I was on like, a couple blocks and I was like, all right, I'm home. And that's it. And so now when I, do plan on going out there to the, those events. Um, I plan way ahead to where like I'll leave like the next day, like at a reasonable time. Right. <laughs> Cause I will never do what I did that first time ever again. That was horrible. But uh, at least I got to see my friends. So. I mean, I did the drive to when I went to Arizona in November to just to go to fear farm with my, my co-host Sammy. Um, Cause he lives out in Arizona and that's a four or five hour drive. And I was just, exhausted doing that so i can only imagine adding another hour to that just to going from here to sec you know where you live it, it's 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 freaking brutal man yeah driving i mean i try to play music to keep me awake but it's just it only does so much after a while you know you just like start falling asleep you know 
Um, obviously, you guys, I can see uh, with these events and everything, you guys are pretty much like a family. And I, I think that's awesome, man, because I think with uh, a tight group like this, uh, a strong team, uh, you guys get a lot done and a lot accomplished. Um, and that's what fuels and, and I think brings the nightmares to life every year. Um, so when I see groups like this who stick together and who are beyond just, you know, haunt, they, they, they do things together and everything. I think it's, it's really cool, man, because you don't see a lot of, a lot of people who do that. A lot of people will go into some of these haunts kind of just solo and, you know, they'll make friends along the way, but after that's, uh, they, you won't see them until probably next season. Whereas for you guys, you guys are pretty much keeping in touch year round, which is awesome. So mad respect to all you guys, man, because th that's that's something nowadays, especially during these times, is, is really hard to keep up with. Um, and I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to actually sit down and talk with a bunch of you to get to learn more about you guys. Um, before we log off, I got two more questions. Or actually, I got three questions that I want to ask. Um do I have three more questions or two more? I'm already losing my mind. It's been a long day. <laughs> uh, me. Yeah, yeah, I feel that, man. Trust me. Work is just brutal. Well, another question from Bronx, and I wanted to save this for last because this was one of the last questions because, uh, you know, I've heard some really good answers from the team so far. Uh, what makes you guys want to come back year after year? Just, it's a family. We have fun with each other. We already hang out practically all fucking day. That's literally yeah. probably right after this. You know, we're going to be hopping on Call of Duty right now, just fucking around for another hour before bed. Yeah. So <laughs> it's literally like once a month, we'll be over at my place, barbecuing, hanging out. Literally, all of us, we all call each other's parents, mom, dad. It's just because that's the community we have. We're all family. Yeah. Literally, if all of them come over to my house right now, they don't even have to knock. They just come straight on in. It's like, oh, hey, mom, hey, dad. And then <laughs> our parents all call each other, call them their kids. Right. Like, we'll go over to Hunter's house um, for parents who are right there, call those kids, and then um, hop in the south doing whatever we have. Like, no matter what we need, we're all always there for each other. If someone yeah. has a flat, they know we're there. Yeah. Yeah, we're just family so it keeps us together because we always say like oh no this is our last year and the next thing you know we're done we'll be hanging out we'll be barbecuing it's like fuck let's go to the rink thursday and then next thing you know we're all, all over at the rink again <laughs> yeah no yeah it's just uh like justin said it's just we're all just a big family like um obviously like the way I see it is I want to go until I'm either like my body can't take it anymore or I'm crippled. Like, like if um, like I want to keep going and going and going no matter what, but one of the like first reasons why I want to come back is to hang out and to do what we all love to do with is with our friends, our family, like how Justin said, like everybody like what like, they would know like we'd all come over to my house like justin on his days off would come to my house and me and paul you know Pass paul only lived like too. five <laughs> paul only lived like five minutes from me and he would literally be at my house every day he would be the one to wake me up so most of the time and he'd be like my mom considers him like her like that's his that's her son and everything and so like you know I've known I'm the like I helped Paul like introduce him to all this stuff and everything and like he fell in love with everything and so you know it's just family that keeps us all together and like what do we whenever we need something or help like we all have each other's backs and stuff but also at the same time it's just that adrenaline rush of just being able to you know practice all these months and then that final result is like the best thing ever. Definitely, man. I mean, I, I think uh, speaking from a fan, that final result is probably the best thing we can ever see from the haunt community. Um, you know, I, I love this community so much. Um, I always say that this YouTube channel is not a job for me. This is more of a hobby for me. 
Uh, I love talking with people. I love going places, experiencing new things. And I just love interacting with the community. I mean, this is such a fun community to be with. And everyone loves horror. Everyone loves going to these haunts. Uh, I look forward to when I can go back to Midsummer Scream because I love meeting with everyone there. It, it's just a fun time. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this community is a, a freaking amazing community. And, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be the rest of my life, and I'm I'm okay with that. I am. I really am. <laughs> Um, he probably thought he was going to get away with this one because we haven't mentioned him at all this podcast. And I mentioned him twice already on the last two podcasts. Um, and you know, now that he knows that I'm about to talk about him, he's probably going to be like, oh, you son of a bitch. You did it again. Uh, we got to give kudos, uh, to the legend himself, Mr. Scott Dieterman, man. Um, he's a big part of this group, man. Uh, from what I hear. The Pebbles. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I've heard the different nicknames. From him, man. The <laughs> <laughs> he's going to hate you so much for that. I, and I know he's going to watch all these podcasts because he specifically messaged me before I did all these. He's like, when are they going live? Are they going to be live? Like, I need to know all the details. And I'm like, all right, here's the breakdown and here's the schedule. And he's like, all right, when are they going to be released? I'm like, all right, it's going to be in a, in a few weeks. He's like, all right. So I know he's going to be watching all these, and I know he'll probably me message you guys all individually after he watches each one of your episodes. Um, but I hear nothing but good things uh, from you guys about him, and I've met him, and I've talked with him personally. Such a really cool and nice guy. Uh, what, can, what, what do you want to say to Mr. Dedeman? Because you know he's watching. Um, well, with me, it's like, Ever since I met him first, I was like, oh, shit, like, he's a legend, like, from Ghost Town, like, he's one of the first guys, like, oh, damn, like, he's gonna be hard and stuff, and, but no, he came in with, like, full open arms and was just, like, the nicest guy ever, and just, you know, taught us, you know, the proper ways to do certain things, help our bodies from, you know, decaying over all these years of doing this and stuff, and, um, but, uh, no, like, man, I love that guy. He, he's taught me so much and he's taught me a lot of life lessons and stuff. And um, like, I remember one time too, we were all at, at uh, Looney's and we had like a barbecue, like get together and we were all just hanging out and talking. And like, I, I straight up looked at him and I told him like in front of everybody and like, everybody was like, Oh, but I was just like, it's true. Like, I don't have my dad with me anymore, but like ever since I met him and the way he would like coach me and like give, like talk to me like one-on-one -on -one personal stuff or just about like, how to scare like techniques and stuff like like he's always reminded me of my dad and I remember him like that day I told him I was like I was like you're like a father figure to me because like the way you talk to me like even the way like sometimes when you're a dick to me but you're in a you're a dick to me in the right way like you're trying to teach me a lesson like he's always giving me that like life lessons when I need them and you know I've always said he's like a father to me and um you know he's the one who taught me like my first year when I was like after like the first night I was like anxious like I didn't like I was scaring but at the same time like I wasn't happy with the way I was scaring like he came up to me like he pulled me aside and he was like hey man like sometimes the simpler stuff is the stuff that counts more you don't have to go in above and beyond and go crazy and like from that like my scares and everything like boosted up and I was like oh wow like I don't have to like kill my throat like from screaming or like doing something like you know the simple stuff is gonna get a scare out of somebody and so, like, I, I tell everybody, like, every newcomer that, like, hey, like, hey, man, like, sometimes the simplest stuff is, you know, the way to go. Like, he's the one that told me to, like, because, like, when you hit a slide, just yell yeehaw, do something like that. And I was like, okay, I tried it, and it worked. And then it just, yeah, the freaking appreciate Dieterman. He's, uh, he's an amazing coach. Um words of the wise from that man all the time so thank you deets I'm we love you i'm purposely gonna <laughs> wait till all these podcasts comes out so to get him on the next podcast to hear him just say you son of a bitch you did that on purpose didn't you i'm like yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> the first time i ever i actually met deets i didn't know who the fuck he was like everyone <laughs> in this community they're like oh my god that's a legend oh my god that's a legend i'm like ah. Ah. <laughs> I don't know who you are and we're right there um at the time evil and squeaks were right there 
uh, they're looking at him and they're like, you don't know who that is? I'm like, uh-uh, he just looks like a little MMA fighter to me. Because he, he was right there. He came in with this oh, freaking thigh-high freaking trunks and wearing like <laughs> flat bottom shoes. I'm like, what is this? Uh, you guys are hiring a CrossFit trainer for us? We're going to learn like some wrestling. I was like, I don't know. I don't, kick like, your ass. Like, no, I even told him this. I went up to him and you know, Squeak, Squeaks had a little grin on his face. He's like, go ask him. I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you wrestle? Do you like do like Krav Maga or like uh, some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? And he goes, a little bit Brazilian, but no. I was like, I do this. I'm like, ah, no. Turn around, walk back, and Squeaks was just right there. She's like, huh? I'm like, mm. <laughs> like because like everyone like Mooch, he fucking fan girls over everybody. He was like, oh my god, you know who that is? I'm like. No. <laughs> and like you don't know who that is i'm like no no I, I, no and he goes that's all so and so i'm like okay i'm just like <laughs> like i i don't fangirl because i don't know who they are yeah but like once i like i actually like they started like showing me like the youtube like i was like oh shit i remember that dude that dude fucking scared a black chick onto my lap uh, when i was like 13 years old <laughs> so i remember i was dating this girl we went to horror nights me and her were sitting on the bench and this dude just comes flying chasing this big old black girl and she jumps onto my lap and like crawling on me and my girl's right there just looking at me like what the <laughs> fuck i'm like uh, i was like can you get off and then next thing you know we had three monsters we had a clown we had a gilly and then we had another clown right there just right there just like I'm like what the can you take her <laughs> and this is at the time where like they touch like woo yeah and shit that was what fucking 13 years ago when i last went well with her <laughs> so i was just like that's when i started like actually putting faces to face i'm like oh shit but no, Dieterman, he's definitely helped us out a lot. Definitely mentored us in the right path. Uh, like when we started falling off the tracks, he brought us back together. Just helped us go for like what we're aiming towards. Right. And now since that we're a little bit more tighter of a group now, he's more so just like the the elder of the family. Like <laughs> we know where we're going, but it's like when we need a little guidance, we turn it's like, is this something good? And he goes, yeah, let's see. Let's see what you guys can do. And it's like, we keep going. And now he's like, not there as much, but he's still there in the shadows watching us, making sure we're staying on track. Right. And yes, if anybody ever gets hurt, he calls it a Justin because I pulled my hamstring a couple times Oof. right before season because yeah. I didn't stretch properly. So boys and girls always stretch. Drink lots of water, no more sodas. Um, the Dieterman so, way, <laughs> slider dynamics. Yeah, I literally yeah. pulled my hamstring. What was it like, July? And then we started in. We already were started practicing show, and I couldn't do anything. Yeah, like they saw nothing but photos. Hamstring from ass to calf with black, blue, and green. Oof. And I was going to chiropractors, constantly getting it worked on, and then I finally got cleared. What? two weeks before season started yeah. to actually go and during that time at the end of the night when you'd see we call it naked slider time stripping down getting out of costume they'll just see my calf and my ass is just all black and blue like what the oh. fuck I'm like, eh, yeah. it's fine <laughs> that's history <laughs> I was like eh, it's fine mm -hmm. it goes away and then the next day it'll be gone and then back to normal back, back and forth so mm -hmm. anytime anyone gets hurt it's like stop being adjusted <laughs> That term is just it's 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 trademark copper and Scott Dieterman. Right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Scott, oh, if he ever flashes you with a flashlight, don't walk to him. If you do, go like this. Cover. Just put your hand straight down. Trust me. Where's the mm. advice? Advice. There you go. Uh -huh. For anyone's gonna work oh, for with Dieterman or for Dieterman, there you go. Hands oh, together. Hands straight down. I, I don't know, remember, because that was when I was having my issues, and he knew oh, he okay. couldn't hit me there. <laughs> yeah, no, you're lucky. I'll be right there. I was like, yeah. It's like, you saw that one? He goes, yeah, good job. 
<laughs> oh man. So Scott, can't wait to have a live podcast with you, buddy. It's gonna be fun. He hates my guts now. Um <laughs> So, last two questions now. Uh, first question, if you guys can work any other haunt, uh, where would you work and why? I would probably work so, not just because of the history of it. Just to do it, just to work at that one time. Just to say, like, I've been where it started. I worked town? at where it started. Yeah, well, ghost town, like, just anywhere, like, in knots general. Right. Just to say, like, I worked where it started. There it is. Yeah. For me, it would also be not just for the fact that this is where it all began. This is where sliding was, like, invented. Like, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for these guys, we wouldn't be here. All these other haunts all over the world wouldn't be doing the same thing, you know. Um, but I wouldn't go Ghost Hunt. I would go CS. Oh. And, yeah. And, um you know, if it, if not uh, Scary Farm, then I know probably a lot of people wouldn't agree, but I would want to. It would be uh, Chainsaw Brigade at uh, Horror Nights. Nice. That's always fun to watch. It really is. Yep. You get to walk at opening night. You get to walk in with John Murdy, walk out with John Murdy. That's mm-hmm. what's up. Um, it's funny you picked uh, CS because I guess a lot of a lot of people sometimes forget. Although a lot of the ne- legends made their name in Ghost Town, they started in they CS. All started in CS, yeah. Yep. So yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Um, last question. Maybe not for Lone Star, it won't be as hard. Maybe Cavities, I don't know. Maybe not both of you won't be as hard. What's your favorite horror film? Halloween, original, nineteen seventy eight. The class. I have that whole homage up there. Classic. For it, and then another section over there. So, there it is. When you got cavities, what's your favorite horror film? Nah, it's a little bit harder for me. These fuckers <laughs> yeah, they, they can he, watch he, every. Yeah, he don't watch he, that much horror movies. Like, and doesn't like. He's not a fanboy like I am, or like how uh, Bronx is, or yeah. So. See, I'll watch them. See, when I was younger, I had a really overactive imagination. If I watched it, I dreamt about it. And I didn't like that shit. <laughs> so, but now that I'm older, I'm like, all right, I can handle it. I'll watch him. Every time we hang out with Omar, he puts on a new film, a new one, over and over. Um, the last time before he moved, he made us go through all the original monster movies, which were actually were pretty cool. Even though, like, back then it was, like, very minimal they were working with. You could tell, like, oh, shit, that was just a double screen right there. Yeah. Uh, but it was still cool because it's where it started the ogs and yeah and it was cool um but like when it comes to fairy horror movie i don't say i can't tell you because i haven't really i can't say like i watched all of them to be like that's the one i'm gonna come back to you every when you come back on this podcast man i'll let you slide this time but i need an answer next time i got you on that but uh, justin you, you should have just said one of the freaking movies i made you watch or i'm pretty sure you already forgot what we watched no, you made me watch practically all the parent. Parent, I can't, I can't talk about these ones on. Oh, uh, I got the liners. Right. Yes, I got a gorgeous smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the all the paranormal activity movies. You made me watch all those. All the monster movies. I really like the monster movies, the classic ones. Those were actually were entertaining. Um. When it comes to horror, I tend to like more of werewolf style movies, not Twilight. Yes, somewhere I said not Twilight. Um, hey, hey. <laughs> it's like, damn it, man, Team Jacob all the way. <laughs> nah, Team Edward all the way. What oh, the heck? damn, he's Team Edward. Damn. Hey, man, I like Twilight too. Okay. Hey, yeah. Right. <laughs> hey. What about uh? So, what are you, cavities? Have you seen an American Werewolf in London? No, I, I didn't show him that one, so I'm pretty sure he hasn't fucking seen it. If you like that werewolves, one's... you'll have to watch that one for sure. That no. one's actually on my watch list on HBO. Yes. Because it was on HBO Go for a while. Watch it. It is, I think, one of the greatest werewolf movies ever made. Um, yeah. With the makeup at the time and how everything was designed, you'll it's it's just amazing. Great soundtrack, Bad Moon Rising. Well, that's the reason. Every time I hear that song, I think of that movie, so. 
Well, gentlemen, uh, earlier I didn't hear you guys talk about Warzone. So if you ever want to play, you just hit your boy up and we'll get in a Warzone game, man. A little fortunate son if we win, you know, that's the only way to go out with that game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the way we way go win. That's the only yeah. way to go out. But uh, I want to thank you guys for being on the show and thank you guys for uh, for just doing what you guys do. Really appreciate it. I can't say it enough from here. Everyone at the Knights of Horror, thank you for bringing the nightmares to life uh, every single year, man. And we appreciate you guys. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people have heroes in this world. You guys are our heroes. You guys are the reasons why we go to these haunts. Uh, and that goes for the entire Slider team right there. Um, you guys bring the show to life every single year. You guys do insane shit and you entertain the hell out of us. And that's why we keep coming back to these events because you guys put on one of the greatest goddamn shows in the world. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you for having us on the show. Thank it's you for having us. Definitely been fun. Anytime, yeah. anytime. I told Creep this. Let's hope it happens one day. When all this COVID shit leaves, uh, or gets better, should I say, because God knows when it will leave. Um, we are going to do an in-person podcast, and we're going to have Dieterman there, so he can roast you guys as the podcast is going. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. And there will be alcohol, so if y'all oh, drink, <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm a Jack and Coke guy, or a Michelada guy, so... That's my Have you had the mango ladas? No, are they good? Now I gotta try that. It go to San Levin, go to liquor store. It's the yellow can. It's a tall can. It's from Modelo. It's yellow. Ooh, it's Modelo gonna say right it's gonna say mango lada. It's not made with clamato. It does have chili in it. It's fucking good. I gotta try that. Nah. I, I do. Uh, I do. I I make my own at home. We have we have everything. I have the clamato, um, tecate, some limes. Uh, tapatio, do a little tahine on the thing, and so delicious. Nah, all you need is that good old American Coors Light, Budweiser, Bush. That's all you need, that Natty Light. I can't drink that stuff, man. I don't like it. That's only if you're like... <laughs> hey, man, Justin, you already know me. I make you guys shotgun all the time, but... <laughs> hey, man, I'll be honest. I'm actually a bit of a cider guy, too, man. I love me some Red Apples or some Angry Orchard, too. Yeah. Angry that. Archer, Low Fireball. Low Fireball. Um you got, a little, you got some angry balls right there. Right. Uh, y'all y'all can count me out for any hard alcohol, so I'm good. <laughs> I, got the, I got the Jack Daniels. Oh come on, we'll ready. do some Jaeger bombs. Got the no. Knights of Horse shot glasses ready. <laughs> good to go. Um <laughs> next time we could do it over like a barbecue, all of us drinking and eating. Bro, I'll Omar bring the, uh, the rum chata with the uh the fireball, make a cinnamon toast crunch, spiked cinnamon toast crunch. There you go. I'm done. Omar knows. <laughs> Omar, all the sliders know how my barbecues go. It's a carnivore's paradise. So if you eat meat, you're gonna love it. Oh, trust me. I love it. Yeah, that's all. That's they that's... found. They finally figured out what crack on a bagel is, and yeah, they're hooked. I I don't know, <laughs> and no disrespect to vegans or vegetarians, but I just I couldn't do it. I I really couldn't. I love meat so much that I I I, I no disrespect. I respect them for doing what they do, but I just can't do it. I'm Mexican. It's in my blood. I have to. There eat you it. go. I mean, you feel you feel what I'm feeling now. I'm Mexican. You know, every other weekend would be carne asada or pollo. You know what I mean? So, hey, hey, some people that's their way. I did it for 90 days. I tried it. I definitely lost a lot of weight. I just I got sick from it. Oh. So, I, me personally, I won't go vegan. Oh, maybe I'll have, do like a vegetarian day or two, but not full blown for the rest of my life. I. I couldn't do I it. Just can't. I love bacon so much. Yeah. I love my chorizo con huevo. Um, I love it all. But uh, I'm like what I'm hearing. We're gonna have to plan that. We're gonna play some Warzone. I'll hit you guys up. Uh, but again, thank you so much, and thank you for helping make uh, Queen Mary Dark Harbor Slider Month um, a thing. This is something that I've been wanting to put on for some time. Uh, special shout out to Scott and and Creep for putting this together, uh, helping me put this together, introducing me to everyone. Um, and scheduling everything. Big help on them, too. Um, so thank you both. And, of course, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification beware every time we put up a new video. Like this video and leave some comments down for these guys because they work their asses off. They do great stuff. Send them positive feedback. Do you guys have any – are you guys on social media at any sorts anyone can follow you guys on? 
Yep. Yes, I am at QMDH underscore cavities. And I'm on Instagram and TikTok. Sweet. Yes, I said TikTok. TikTok is legit. <laughs> I'm on TikTok every day. Uh, I'm just at Instagram at uh, Q- QMDH underscore Lone Star 666. There it is right there. Go follow these guys because uh, they post amazing content with their characters and stuff like that. Or if you want to see them win Warzone, right there on the stories. There you go. <laughs> that's how they do it. I, that's, that's, you guys were actually really the inspiration is. why I started doing Fortunate Son because I'd always watch your Warzone victories and I'd be like, shit, that fucking song fits so perfect with this damn game. Like, it, it works so good. And I lo- already love that band. So, I mean, like, so me and my buddies do it now. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, go follow them, give them a follow, show them love, and tell them Knights of Horse sent you because, you know, we, we, we love the Queen Mary Sliders. This is, you know, we love going to these events, but I'll see you guys next week. I'm your host, Anthony, Mindless Horror Podcast, and tune in next week for another episode with the Queen Mary Dark Harbor Sliders. <laughs>